Hey, are you a bass player that plays gospel or someone who's wanting to learn how to play gospel music? Well, I have something that I've created for bass players just like you. I've been creating these gospel bass jam tracks. I've already created contemporary gospel, gospel quartet, and now I've created the straight gospel bass jam pack. And what that basically is, is my interpretation of gospel choir music. It's something that I think is really, really essential to learning how to really play and understand gospel music. Now, this bass jam pack features music that feels more like the gospel choir stuff, which is not to be confused with praise and worship or gospel quartet, any of that kind of stuff. It's slightly different. It's all gospel. The thing about gospel, if you've listened to it, it's pretty vast. It's a lot of stuff that you can learn in gospel music. And I understand that not everyone has access to that music and not everybody understands that there's so many different areas of gospel music so if you are a bass player that's wanting to know more about gospel want to have something to jam to I've created this pack just for you and as well I've created the instructional to go along with it so I'm gonna be breaking down all six of these tracks showing you exactly what I'm doing you're gonna get my version of my bass take what I'm playing how I would approach it as well as getting the sheet music and the tab if you need that some of you guys just play by ear and that's fine I'm gonna walk you through exactly what I'm doing you using the number system and all that kind of stuff so that you can get a good idea how to approach this and add it to your arsenal of things to pull out. So if you just happen to find yourself in that gospel music situation, you know exactly what to do. So I encourage you to check out this gospel pack and start adding a little bit more to your arsenal. I'll see you on the inside. Peace. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Grooves and Motivation Live. That <laughs> sound like a radio announcer. What's up, Ricardo? I see you already in the uh, comments. Uh, Floppy, good morning to you. Be sure to let me know where you're watching. I see we have Columbia in the building. Southampton is in the building. Happy to have you guys this morning. We're going to jump right in. Jump right into this groove this morning. All right, let's see what we got. Thank you. 
Blessings to you. Base one kitten. Edwin, good morning. Terrence, good morning to you. All right. I like that. Let's, let's move with it. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
The original song that's Derek Hearn, I think that's how you pronounce it. H E A R N, playing the bass. Phenomenal, phenomenal bass player. Uh, made a major contribution to gospel music uh, by way of Ricky Dillard, and I'm sure many others, but most notable, Ricky Dillard. Uh, so if you pick up any Ricky Dillard gospel album, you're going to hear some amazing bass playing by Derek. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Angel says he's watching this morning from straight from PA, sending blessings, man. I appreciate it. I received those blessings. <laughs> Benny, good morning to you. Watching from South Africa. Cool stuff. I'm not a minister. <laughs> I'm not. I'm just. I'm just a fellow, fellow uh, believer. <laughs> I'm not a minister. No titles. at the very end of this song. It was like a, uh, uh, what was it? Something along that line. Uh, Coast, okay, I got you from Gold Coast, Australia. Never heard of that. Sounds cool. <laughs> All right, so we have the chords I was playing. is that um, I'm just simply using a looper pedal and a reverb for this and that's a uh, TC electronic Hall of Fame 2 that's all you hear dry it sounds like this
Miss J, good morning to you. Tone sounds great. So I got these, <clears throat> I got this bass uh, strung up as a tenor bass. I need to go back and reset the intonation because of that very fact. But um, yeah, I got it strung up as a tenor bass. The range of this bass is generally not that high as a standard five string. It's just strung different. Uh, I strung it up probably two to three weeks ago. So the last couple of broadcasts I've been playing this bass simply because I like the access to those higher notes for the reason purposes of doing those chords and that kind of thing. All right, we'll jump right into it, right into our discussion uh, this morning, if you will. Um, it's, it's something, it was on my mind, it was really, really heavy on my mind, and I wanted to talk about it, especially this morning when I, I got up, and I know this will be helpful to a lot of people. First off, before I jump into the, the, the grooves and motivation talk, if you will, I wanted to say thank you for you guys that joined me on Tuesday mornings. This, it's super early. If you're in America, uh, anywhere in America, it's pretty early right now. <laughs> And so thank you for you guys. I don't take it for granted that you take time out from your busy schedule to listen to anything that I have to say or listen to me play. Whatever the reason is, you come to this channel. Thank you so much. If you're new to this channel, I'm Jermaine Morgan, um, music uh, producer, songwriter, speaker, consultant, tons of things in the music world, uh, but most notably a bass player for most of you guys, a uh, professional musician for over... Um, I'm going to say 15, 15 years. I've been playing for most of my life. I've been playing since the age of 12, but professionally, for about 15 plus years, I've been doing this as a, a professional basis. So, yeah, um, I just wanted to share some thoughts. Uh, I am, before I get too far into this, I did want to mention I am the author of the book, 10 Ways to Success the Working Musician. My daughter put this little marker in here, but 10 Ways to success the working musician and and basically in this book i share my story my uh my journey uh ranzis bernard good morning to you man i share my my journey in becoming a professional musician and just the different routes i took from <laughs> before i was uh, necessarily considered a professional up until current time so i'd share all that information with you and 10 different things that i've done along the way that been able to kind of create some different sources of revenue for me as a working musician and, you know, being able to uh, uh, just change the trajectory, so to speak, of my own personal career and my own personal journey by taking some steps that would, were not all necessarily traditional as it related to being a musician. So I encourage you to grab that book again. That's 10 Ways to Success. It's available on Amazon, Kindle, Audible. You can get the uh, you can get the audio book and you can get it on my website, JermaineMorgan.net as well if you want a copy of this book. All right, so <clears throat> jumping right into this, uh, IOT, I guess I'm saying IOUT, uh, you say it's t 10 p.m. there in Australia. Oh, wow. And uh, it's one o'clock there in Southampton. Cool, cool stuff. That's, that's this time zones and everything. That's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. Um, so jumping right into it, the, the title of today's topic is Decide Where You're Going. Decide Where You're Going. And I can honestly say in my, and we'll start with talking about the playing. When it came to my playing, and we, we're talking about this whole career, how is this related to 10 Ways to Success, my whole career, and all this kind of thing. When I decided uh, what I wanted to do, like really, really decided what it is I wanted to do and start pursuing that. I can trace it all the way back to, you know, years of, from my first year entering college up until now, the more specific I got about what it was I wanted to do, the more I was able to start seeing those goals and those dreams realized. And so for a lot of you guys who are, um, in that transitional space, that would be the thing I would tell you, and I'll go a little bit more in depth as it relates to your playing, 
uh, as it relates to your career, that kind of thing, life in general, being more decisive about what you want to do and being more specific, rather, about exactly what you want to do is going to really serve you well in the long run. If you're, if you're really intentional about deciding what it is you want to do, it's going to serve you well in the long run because it gives you, just like it says, deciding gives you a sense of direction. If you want to write down anything from the day on your phone, on a piece of paper or anything, deciding gives you a sense of direction. Simply deciding. It, it, it's a saying, say, once you know what you're going to do, you automatically know what you're not going to do. You know, it's like I ask my wife all the time when we're out traveling, and uh, you know how, it, for any of you married people, uh, hey, babe, what do you want to eat today? It's like, and sometimes it's hard to come to a decision of where, oh, it doesn't matter, you know, whatever you want to get, or I'm cool with whatever when we know you're not cool with whatever. But the quicker we can make a decision on exactly what it is. So what I started to do uh, <laughs> over the years, I started naming off restaurants uh, that we normally would eat at or things that I know she probably would or wouldn't like. And so that way I do process of elimination. So I start saying, all right, you want this. Do you want Mexican today? Do you want this kind of food? Do you want that kind of food? And as I go down through those, I'm able to do process of elimination and hopefully get to an answer uh as to all right this is where we're going to eat at for sure because i know you don't want this 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 and that and that way we can narrow down by simply deciding <laughs> you know what what we want to do what we want to eat we can kind of narrow down our options so we know we're not doing mexican today we know we're not doing chinese today we know we're not doing japanese today we know we're not doing this we know we're not doing that all right so what does that leave because once we made that decision it eliminates all the other options so now that path gets a little bit more narrow in terms of me being decisive as to where we're going to go. I'm like, all right, these are the options that we have. We have these restaurants available to us and all of these others on the side. We're not going to do those others, so we know that path is going to be straight. What in the world does that have to do with your playing? Well, in, in regards to playing, I have a lot of my, well, I'm not going to say a lot, but I have people who join my website. I have the monthly membership lessons where there's a big, huge catalog of lessons, base lessons for any player to come on in and start kind of really improving their skills. Uh, my lessons are targeted more towards uh, beginner, intermediate, upper intermediate, uh, advanced players is trying to um, advance even more. Um, but, you know, the, the beginner, to intermediate, to, you know, upper level, intermediate, on to the early stages of advanced, that's kind of where my website targets. And with that, I have some players to come on there, and, and especially the newer players, and they, they want to know, okay, where do I go? Or what, what, what should I do? What type lessons should I be working on? Is there somewhere that you would direct me to go from here? And I, I understand it because when you're new, it's like everything is new. I don't know where to go. But one of the things that's been kind of um, a heavy thing with me lately in my consulting, as I'm consulting with my different groups and consulting or doing the coaching calls with different students, one of the things that's kind of been at the forefront of my mind lately is assessment, self-assessment, assessment, doing assessment and seeing where you are. Let's let's figure out where we are. And what I had uh, even my uh, my group and um, my students to do is I need you to assess yourself on a scale of one to ten. Where do you think you are? And when you're doing that, you're not necessarily comparing yourself to somebody else's 10. You're comparing yourself to your potential 10. All of us at this current level of this current stage of our playing or this current stage of our career, wherever you are, even if you don't do music and for some random reason you're watching me, at some level, I'm sorry, at this stage, you're at some level and that you're basically choosing to be at because in your mind you know, well, if I put in a little bit more work, I could at least be here. Most of all of us have that somewhere like me even in my playing i have these times where i feel like i'm hitting a 10 and then there's times i feel like man i'm hitting a strong seven <laughs> and then you catch me on the right day it might be a five you know in terms of me measuring 
myself against my own potential, I know I'm not maximizing my full potential. So I want to be able to assess and really see where I am so that I can start to maximize my full potential. So if my potential is to hit a 10, I don't want to stay at a 7. So I got to be honest with myself and figure out, okay, why am I not at a 10? What am I doing or what am I not doing? And along with that assessment, I start to write down a list of things in terms of what I'm liking about what I'm doing and what I'm not liking about what I'm doing. So five things that I like and five things that I don't like. All right. So I'm practicing or I'm experimenting with new sounds. I'm experimenting with new tones. I change the way I strung my bass up to, to, you know, inspire me to do something. else. that's something that I like. All right. What are you not doing, though? Well, I'm not being able to get in the full uh, 10 hours per week because I have so much other stuff going on. All right, so now that I do that assessment, I look at that assessment, I look at the things that I'm doing right, and I look at the things that I'm doing wrong, and I start to make the adjustment. I need to increase on the things that I'm doing right, on being creative and coming up with ideas and all that kind of stuff. Like one of the things lately I've been doing in my company is trying to do some team building. Over the last few months, I've been bringing in people to help me do certain things. And normally I would be doing a lot of this work by myself. But as I've been doing more assessment uh, about myself, I'm finding out, dude, you can't do all of this stuff. Like you can get a lot done by yourself, but you need help. You need a team. You need resources. You need other people who are like minded to come in and help you to get certain things done. Not that you can't do them and not that you're not uh, adequate or you don't have the skills to do them. But some things are not necessary for you to do. Some things you need to outsource. That way you can delegate your time to something better. I'm a type of person, I like to do my own yard, most of it. I don't like cutting my edges. I don't like weed eating. <laughs> but I like, I like doing my own yard. So recently, uh, it I got a lot of land, so it takes me a while to cut my yard. So recently I got me a, a bigger zero turn. It was a little bit more money, but the way I'm looking at it is the trade-off in my time it helps me to still do what I like to do, but yet it's not taking me so much time. I enjoy doing my own yard because that's like my personal time. It might sound crazy, but I put my headphones on, you know, I put on something positive or uplifting, and I relax while I'm cutting, you know, doing my thing. Now, if I was doing a push mow, it'd probably be a different thing, you know, that's it's some exercise for real, for real. But generally, if I'm sitting down, I'm riding, you know, I'm reflecting, I'm listening, I'm taking in, and I'm, I'm feeding my mind, I'm feeding my thoughts, I'm being aware of uh, some things that I need to improve on. So I enjoy that time, but I don't need all day to do that. So I need something to kind of level the playing field. So I got me a, a lawnmower that uh, that cut the time in half. You know what I'm saying? I got my zero turn. It, it, it cut the time that I was cutting my yard. It cut that time in half. Now, those extra hours, it frees me up to be more creative, to be more productive as it pertains to my business and the ideas that I'm trying to get out. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm not spending all day on my yard. I can I can do that in half the time that it took me. Now I can move on to something else, right? And so that's the idea. As I'm doing my assessment, I'm finding out what needs to be taken away and what needs to increase. That doesn't mean you have to get away uh, or, or get rid of everything, but there are some things that are not serving you. Um, good morning uh, to the people. Of the Walt, good morning to you, man. Uh, Raymond. Good morning to you. Shane's Book Corner. I'm going to read some of these before I get too far. Uh, good morning, Jermaine. I was lucky to catch your live stream this morning while I make breakfast for me and my girlfriend. <laughs> Hope you're doing well. Good stuff. Glad you're here. Well, it's been good. Got to go. Floppy, sorry that you got to go, man. Uh, but, yeah, so so getting back to that idea, uh, and who is that? Carlac? Uh, Carlac 1, CNN. U UK, you know who you are. Good morning to you. Uh, Magdale, good morning to you. So with that idea, again, I'm trying to make sure that I'm being very, very aware in my assessment. I'm trying to be very, very aware of the things that I need to add and the things that I need to take away. And that helps you to decide. It helps you to decide the direction that you need to go in. Now, the example that I was making with the people coming on the website and, you know, asking these questions about, okay, what's the next thing I need to do? Well, after you assess your playing, you start to find, and when you're being brutally honest with yourself, and I said this, I, I, I've said this to, you know, my uh, uh, people that I'm consulting and my coaching students and everybody and, and my monthly membership members, 
I'm saying this to you as well. This is not license for you to start beating yourself down or start talking negative to yourself. When I say brutally honest, I'm simply meaning be honest. Tell the truth about where you are so that you can move forward. I, be I believe in my bass playing because many of you guys, if you've been here longer than today, to today if I could talk this morning, if you've been here longer than today, you know that I play guitar. You see these guitars on the wall. I play guitar first. Uh, and, you know, I was playing keyboards as well for a church. I was playing guitars and all this kind of stuff. And bass was kind of always on the back burner for me, but it was something I could do. I wasn't really, really good at it. So once I moved, uh, it actually started when I moved to Alabama and went to UNA, University of North Alabama. I started playing with the gospel choir over there, and I started really working on my bass playing, but not really, really pushing like I should. And then when I moved to Atlanta, though, down here to do my internship, and uh, I landed this gig uh, at this mega church here. I learned really quickly that I needed to pick up the pace on the bass. Uh, I was playing at another church that was pretty big. It was an AME church that I played at when I first got down here. And I was having to grow then. But when I got to that mega church, I saw that, like, man, what I was doing wasn't cutting it. I had to pick up the pace. And so as I began to listen to these records and learn these records, from week to week, I was assess I didn't know I was doing it then as much as I know it now. But from week to week, I was assessing my playing. I was seeing what my struggles were. All right, when you're going for a riff or something like that, or uh, when you're trying to play the groove, it's not as solid all the way through. It feels good up until a certain point, and then you get lost in the song and you lose that groove. For about, <laughs> for about eight measures, it takes you to get back and get that groove solid. So that's something you need to work on. So by doing that assessment, long story short, by doing that assessment each week and being honest, brutally honest with myself, I was able to see, all right, I'm really struggling in this area, so I need to figure out what I need to do. And by doing that, it wasn't all on me. I was asking questions. I was asking questions. I would ask my MD, like, man, what, you know, what do I need to work on? And being okay with people being brutally honest with you. If you really, really, truly want to improve, you have to be okay with people telling you the truth. If they tell you, your groove sucks. If you want to get better, okay, all right. So what can I do? Now, if someone is giving criticism with no construction, that's not helpful. It can be helpful depending on the way you take it. If you're a person that takes it, and you internalize and, and, and it's like you start beating down and you start getting negative and get depressed, of course, that's not good for you. But if you're a person who takes that information and it's like, all right, he says my groove is not cool, so I need to get some help. I need to get someone to help me with my groove. And you're that type of person, good for you. But <laughs> Reginald said that's just straight hating. I got, I got you. But some people can be brutally honest, and I'll tell a story later. But some people can be brutally honest with you, and if you take it the right way, it can actually move you forward. Because a person's opinion of you does not have to become your own opinion. I got that statement from uh, Les Brown, and I love it. Um, because, you know, I can do one or two things with that personal opinion. I can take the meat and spit out the bone, or I can take it all and internalize it and start feeling down about myself. It's like if I take that meat and I spit out the bone, all right, I can switch that back around. All right, if my groove sucks, now I'm trying to be constructive. Even if you meant it for bad, I can take that and twist it on you. All right, you said my playing sucks. All right, what about it sucks? Do you care to tell? And if that's a person who genuinely cares about you improving, they're going to give you some information. See, the thing about getting good information, it doesn't matter where it comes from. What's the old commercial? You can learn a lot from a dummy. <laughs> Buckle your safety belt. You know what I'm saying? Those crash dummies, they was giving you real information, but they were dummies. They weren't talking. They were just getting killed in the process. Well, not getting killed. You know what I mean. They, <laughs> sorry. Don't flag me, YouTube. But those crash dummies, they were getting tore up in those cars. And from that, you could see, okay, maybe I need to put my seatbelt on. You got the information that you needed, and you didn't really have an interaction with the source that you got it from. So if somebody's telling you your playing doesn't sound great, you don't have to necessarily interact with that source. You can just take the meat and spit out the bones. And if they're not willing to tell you where your playing sounds terrible at, go ask somebody else. Hey, man, be honest with me. How do I sound as a bass player? Or what do a better question, rather, if you're sensitive, a better question, all right, what do I need to work on? 
What do I need to work on from your honest opinion, listening to me? What are some things that you think I'm struggling with? Because I'm kind of new to this and I don't know. I'm not aware of what I'm doing wrong. And honestly, that's why I, I get a lot of people that come to me for coaching. And that's the point of coaching. Not necessarily I'm going to teach you how to play the bass. But no, I'm going to help you to see where you're kind of making some mistakes at so we can start to put you on a path to correct those mistakes in order to get better. I don't want to uh, just tell you everything you should be doing. It's like, no, nah, I, I want to direct you in the way that you should go. I want to direct you because your path might be a little different from mine. You might not be trying. I've had some students that come to me. They're not trying to become a, a gospel player. You know what I'm saying? They want to learn some things. Now, there are some elements that I can give them from my experiences uh, in playing gospel music that will help to grow what they're doing, but they're not trying to become me or somebody else. They just want to get over the hurdle of where they are. So they need me as a professional to assess where they are, help them with something that they can't see because we're blindsided. On a, a lot of times, our peripheral isn't working musically. And sometimes you have to begin to develop an awareness. So now I'm aware if I do this, come on my band people, if I do this, I can see my thumbs on either side of me because somebody had to make, make me aware how to start using my peripheral. Same thing with your musical peripheral. Someone sometimes need to make you aware of that. And after you become aware, now you can start making the improvements. So it's all about getting that awareness so that you can begin to improve in the areas that you're struggling in. But if you're too sensitive and you're always thinking, man, I'm always right, everybody's wrong, everybody's trying to be mean, well, you'll probably never grow. You'll probably never grow. Going back to that story, I'll, I'll, I'll read these comments in a second. But going back to the story I was saying uh, when somebody, you said somebody's hating. No, sometimes some cats come from an era of tough love that they just, they just tell you like it is. And sometimes a few of us need to be told like it is. Because we can be going on thinking that we're sweet, and we're actually not. You're not sweet at all. But you're going around thinking you're sweet, and sometimes you need people to tell you like it is. Now, I, on the other hand, I didn't ever think I was sweet. <laughs> and I knew I had some struggling. Uh, I, I knew I was struggling my plan. I tell this story. I probably told it last week as well, but I know it's a different group. Uh, but, but a good friend of mine, he was you know, doing, doing some major things at the time. Uh, playing with his band and uh, just really had some great things going on and I asked him I was like man you know dude you should you should hit me up man let me play bass on some of this stuff I'll never forget he was sitting there with his sidekick he had the sidekick phone then he was sitting there texting he and I both sitting beside each other he looked at me he said you're not ready <laughs> and went back to texting on his phone and never you know thought twice about it and for me, I, he said something probably a little bit more harsh than that. That's my guy. But he was just straight. He's a guy, he's straight to the point. He's real blunt. He just tell you to your face like it is. And I think, I honestly think more of us need people like that in our life. Not to make you feel bad, but to make you grow up in a sense. Make you be okay with everybody not liking you. Everybody not being part of your fan club. Because what that does, it challenges you. Like, man, I got to step it up. You know, even if you were like at that time, I was really pushing. I was really pushing. I was trying to grow. I was trying to get better. I was putting in the work. But at the same time, that part, that element, that motivation, having somebody tell you to your face, you ain't good enough. Basically, you're not good enough. For somebody to tell you that in your face, it does something else for you. It lights a fire up under you. And I, I would dare to say to a, some of you that's watching today, it's been a minute since somebody challenged you or somebody lit that fire up on you and just told you straight out, man, you're not good enough. And I don't, <laughs> hear me clearly when I say this. You don't have to take someone else's opinion about who you are and live with that whole thing. You don't have to do that. But sometimes it's good to challenge you to become that better version of who you are. Because again, with everything, we're doing this personal assessment. The whole thing that we're talking about is doing this personal assessment. As I'm doing this personal assessment, if you tell me I'm not good enough, all right, is there any meat to what you're saying? Because I'm going to spit that bone out, the hate, <laughs> what my man was talking about earlier. You're just being a hater. I'm going to spit that out anyway. But I'm going to look at what you're saying and see, is there any truth in what you're saying? 
am, am I possibly sucking in some area of my plan? Is there something that's making this person not want to call me? Is there something about my playing? And I get it. Everything isn't for everybody. Everybody ain't going to be feeling what you're doing. You, you might accept that, get over it. Some people are not going to call you. They have a lot of opportunities, but they're simply not going to call you. You're not their go-to person. Let me say that to somebody and let you be okay and move on. You are not that person's go-to person. You are not the in crowd's go-to person, but that's okay. One of the things, I'm going to go back, shameless plug again. I'm going to go back to this book. One of the things, one of the main things in this book, if you decide to pick this book up, it's not a, not a tough book to read. I mean, it's, it's my first book, so it was straight to the point. I mean, I didn't, we, old folks say I didn't do a lot of rearing and tearing, none of that. I just got to the point. I talked about my own personal life. But one of the things about this book is resourcefulness, being resourceful. I think I came to grips a long time ago with the fact that I'm not everybody's go-to guy. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with not being everybody's go-to guy. Sometimes it has nothing to do with your skill level, how good you are, uh, your attitude, all those things that go into helping you to get hired, helping you to maintain gigs. Sometimes it's simply people just rather have somebody else. And it's, that's okay. But what I learned how to do is to take that after doing my assessment and saying, you're not going to determine how high I'm going to go in this career. You're not going to do that because what I'm going to do is I'm going to decide, going back to decide where you're going. I'm going to decide where I want to go in this career, and I'm going to start blazing my own trail. If you want to open a door for me, I'll kick one down. I'll cut me one out. I'll do like Mission Impossible. You know, you got these glasses up here, and I'll, I'll take me a little cutting tool, and I'll cut me a glass. I'll make me a hole. I'll make me a way so I can get to where it is I'm trying to go. You're not going to stop me from getting there. But if you take the mindset that, oh, man, that person don't want to fool with me. This person don't call. I never get the calls, so maybe I'm not good. No, no, that's the wrong mindset. Now, again, you go back and you assess and see, is there any truth to what people are saying? Is there any truth to it? Now, if there is any truth, now I look at that truth. Okay, maybe my groove is not strong. Maybe my improvisation is not really strong. Or maybe my feels. I got a strong groove, but it's kind of boring. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't give them nothing. How can I improve that? So I start looking at ways to improve those things that I have now recognized as something that I can improve. I start looking at ways that I can get better at these things, whether it's taking lessons from somebody, you know, doing coaching calls with myself or some other player, or whatever it is that you need to do, or getting around uh, a musician that's in my community, somebody that's really respected and somebody that I look up to and that I know who has the knowledge and who can help me. Let me sit down and let me do lunch with him. Let me go buy this person lunch and see if this person will help shine some light on some of the things that I need to do to get to that next place. Because you can find out, again, you can find out a lot from different sources. Some people you don't even like might have some valuable information that you need from them. Maybe you need to call somebody or text somebody this week that you don't like, but they're cold-blooded. They can play. Or they, they, are, they are connected. They're in the industry. So that you can get some, like, even if they're not going to hire you, ask them just in general, hey, man, what do you look for in a bass player? What do you look for in this? What do you look for in, in that? When you're looking to hire a musician, what are some of the things you're looking for? That way, now I have an idea of what to expect. I have an idea of what I can be working on. Not so I can get this call from this person, but so I can become the overall best that I can be and get to my level 10 in my personal assessment. Because that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to seek out this information. But if you sit on the sidelines and cry because nobody's letting you in the game, that's what you're going to be doing your whole life. And many of you will quit. If you sit on the sidelines long enough because nobody will let you in, you'll quit, you put it down, you go do something else. So you'll be a waste of talent. You'll be a waste of a gift because you kept waiting for somebody to open the door for you when it was never intended for anybody else to open the door for you. You have to open the door for yourself. You have to do it. You have to put it in the work. You have to decide what it is, what it's going to be, and I'm going to create something. And if it's not there, I create the set of circumstances that I want as opposed to taking this stuff that you're trying to hand me because this is what you think I'm, I'm worthy of. It's kind of like going to the car dealership. One year I decided, um, I always had, you know, I'll be, I'll be transparent. 
I always had this dream since since my first year in college. Uh, I wanted a Cadillac Escalade. No, I'm sorry, this this was my first year in the university, so it was like 2004, and I wanted a Cadillac Escalade. I wanted one. I wanted one so bad. I bought this model. I wish I had my model in here. I'll bring it in and show it to you guys. I was at this, uh, I always, you know, like the models and replicas and stuff like that, but I was at this gas station, and this was when, like, the dub wheels was really big, and so you would see all of these models and stuff sitting in these gas stations. So I saw a white Escalade with rims and everything, and I'm like, oh, man, that's dope. So I bought it, and that was, like, my vision, the beginning of my vision board as to getting my Cadillac, you know, because that's the truck I wanted. So all throughout college, you know, I, I kept that in the back of my mind. I always had my truck sitting on my dresser. Yeah, ain't nobody had no money in college, so I definitely wasn't getting one. Uh, but as I moved through life, you know, I got down here, started doing my internship at Doppler. By that time, they had came out with the new Cadillac. And so I remember, I'll never forget, I seen the new Cadillac. Somebody had it parked up on a hill. I was like, oh, man, that's so dope. I, I would love to have one of those one day. But the car I was riding in was definitely not a Cadillac Escalade, but I kept it in my mind. So... Moving forward, the point of the story, I bought, you know, my wife and I, as we got married, we bought a couple of cars and this kind of thing. And, and uh, you know, I had my truck. I had a Montero Sport. My other truck that I had was totaled out due to a hell storm. So I had this Montero Sport. And I worked on that truck more than I drove it. I'll just be honest with you. I did more work on that truck <laughs> than I drove it. And, but one day, one day, come on here, years later, after talking to a friend of mine, I just decided, I decided that I wasn't going to let somebody at a car lot determine what I was going to drive. You're not going to do it. You're not going to determine. And it, it was a year, it was a couple of years, I'm sorry, a couple of years after my wife and I had purchased, we bought a brand new Montero uh, Toyota, I'm uh, sorry, not a Montero, but it was a Toyota RAV. That's what it was, a, a RAV4. We bought it. And got rid of our other car and bought this RAV4, brand new, had seven miles on it. And we drove it for like two and a half years. And I asked my wife one day, I was like, do you see yourself in this car long term around this time we was pregnant? Uh, no, we had had our first child. I'm sorry, guys. We had had our first child. And I was like, do you see yourself in this car? Because essentially the car was for her. Uh, I was like, you see yourself in this long term? She's like, nah. I said, do you really even like it like that? She's like, mm, it's all right. I'm sitting here like, so we're paying all of this money for this car that you don't really even like? And from that point on, my mind, something woke up in me after having this conversation with a good friend of mine. And from that moment, I decided, I said, I'm done paying for stuff I don't want. I'm done paying for stuff. I'm going somewhere with this story. I'm, going, I'm, I'm done paying for stuff I don't want. And long story short, not long after that, I bought my Escalade, and I've been in it ever since. <laughs> it's, it's, it's older now, but, hey, it's paid for, and I love it. It's my dream truck. I had some, some work done on it recently because somebody scratched me when I went out of town, so I still love it to this day. Uh, and I've had it for almost almost 10 years now. I've had my Escalade. It, it looks just like what I wanted, and uh, I'm going to keep moving forward with it. If the Lord decides to give me another one, I'll take that, but for now, I love it, it's paid for, and it's mine. So, again, my point of that is I had to decide that I wasn't going to continue to pay for something that I didn't want. This is the truck I want. I didn't want a Toyota RAV4. No disrespect to Toyota. I didn't want a, a, a Mitsubishi Montero. No disrespect. Well, disrespect to Mitsubishi because y'all ought to be ashamed. <laughs> I, did, I had a Ford Explorer. I bought that Ford Explorer years ago. That wasn't the truck that I really wanted. I wanted an Escalade. And granted, I had to work and wait to the right time to I had to be able to pay for it. But long story short, I had made my mind up that I was done paying for stuff that I didn't want. Now, I don't want somebody to take this out of context and start doing things that are not wise with your money. Now, you, you have to start using wisdom. That, that's on you in terms of using your wisdom. But to this point, I was done paying for stuff that I didn't want. If I'm going to have to pay all these years for this vehicle and make these big hefty payments, why not pay for something that I want to drive as opposed to paying for something that I don't like? I ain't even really that into. It's all right. I don't want to pay a whole, some big lump sum payment for something and I'm going to say it's all right. You know what I'm saying? If I'm paying for something, let it be something that I want. So if I'm going to put all this time into this instrument, 
If I'm going to put in all this time trying to learn music, then I'm going to play what I want. Same thing with accepting gigs that I talk about in the book. I'm not going to keep accepting gigs that I don't want. I didn't put all this work in to become a musician and start playing music that I don't like. Now, that's something to learning stuff that is not necessarily your cup of tea that you're able to grow and learn from. Now, I'm not saying don't listen to other styles of music, but there's a difference in terms of you accepting gigs that you don't like the environment, you don't like the people, you don't like what you're being exposed to, going back to the environment, and uh, going back to my talk on last week, I'm becoming something that I didn't want to be because I'm having to accept gigs that I don't want in order to keep my lights on. Well, if I want to stop accepting these gigs that I don't want, then I'm going to have to make a decision and decide where it is I want my career to go so that I can start calling the shots as to what the gigs I want, if I even want to play gigs. But I have to be the one that makes that call to decide what that looks like. And after deciding what that looks like, I begin to move in that direction because you'll never hit a target that you don't have. You will never hit a target that you do not have. So some of you guys learn to play. You practice for hours. You got your skills up to a certain point, and you're just hoping somebody calls you for any gig. And guess what? You'll get a call for any gig, pay, paying any amount of money, and you'll settle. Nothing wrong with that. If that's your dream, if that's what you want to do, I just want to play music. All power to you. But if you're a person that you're very specific about what it is you want to do, I don't want to play these type gigs. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I specifically want to do this. When you know specifically what you want to do, if you can't find it anywhere, you'll begin to create it. Your very nature will demand that you get what you're asking for. Your, your very nature will de demand that you create the thing that you're looking for. If I can't find it anywhere, this is my mentality now. If I can't find it, I'll create it. I'll create it in a minute. I won't think twice about it. I'll create it. And some kind of way, the resources that I need will be there in order for me to get that very thing that I'm looking for because I don't have to be limited by what I see, what's there. Everything is changing, especially in the world that we live in with social media, with YouTube, with all these different things. You're able to literally create uh, the life that you want. And you don't have to compromise your integrity or who you are in order to create that thing that you want, right? All right, so let me go through a few of these comments before I be here uh, way longer than I intended. Uh, let's go back. Let's go back. All right, so, so Marcus Jones says, some others think that you're better than what you think of yourself. What about that? Well, you have to be careful. Marcus, I talked about this a while back concerning, you know, that um, – the humility. Sometimes I call it false humility. And I know sometimes it's real humility. You have to be careful of the story that you tell yourself in terms of, you know, other people think you're better than what you are. And I know it's the, the, the fine line between being cocky and arrogant and being honest with yourself in terms of like, I, I see where I need to go. But something that I, I learned a little while ago in terms of, because I used to get compliments. Oh, I ain't going to say I used to get compliments. I still get compliments. But what I used to do is I was I would always kind of be like, nah, man, I ain't doing nothing. Like try to kind of downplay the compliment and not really allow that person to compliment me who just gave me that compliment. And by doing that, it's like you're telling that person, number one, I don't really value what you're saying. Or the reverse of that, you're trying to convince that person to tell you again and convince you, nah, man, say it again. It's like. Uh, man, you sound really good on that. Oh, I ain't doing that. No, man, you really sound good. No, man, I, I ain't doing that. No, man. So you, it's almost like you're feeding them to keep saying it indirectly. Not saying that that's what you're trying to do, but that's what you're doing. You're getting them to say it to you over and over again. Or it's that thing that's like, what you're saying to me is not valuable because I don't believe in my own self. So what you're saying doesn't mean anything to me. And now the, 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 the thing you got to be careful about with that is you can't be too swayed by people's opinion either way. I can't be too far on the left, meaning that I'm thriving on people people's approval of me. And then the other side of it, I can't be put down by people's disapproval of me. You know, keep it in a, a healthy place. Like, let it be what it is. If they say you sound great, man, thank you. 
to God be the glory. If you're going to say that, you know, I appreciate it. I'm working really hard. You know, you don't have to say all of that, but it's like, I appreciate it. Thank you. And move on. Don't put too much weight on it one way or the other. But, like, you're robbing yourself. Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? It might be endorphins or something like that. But you're robbing yourself of what you get from that. You need that sometimes to continue to keep going. It's like almost like working out for six weeks straight. You're on the strict diet and do all this stuff. And you see no results, and nobody ever notices anything different about you. That does something for your motivation. You can motivate yourself to a certain degree, but every now and again, it feels good to know that after you've been doing all this work, hey, man, you beefing up a little bit, or you slimming down a little bit. You know, that kind of thing. It helps to keep you motivated, and now you're in the gym, you're in the, ah. You know what I'm saying? You're working out a little harder because now you notice that you're making progress because oftentimes we can't see our own picture because we're too close to it. But, but it takes, takes someone who's a little further away to really see the progress that we've made, all right? So that, that's my response to that, uh, Marcus. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, Shane's Book Corner says, I began informally mentoring a young musician I work with to help him learn theory and technique on the bass. And the first piece of advice I gave him was look forward to sounding lousy. <laughs> he said, number two, because if you sound lousy, it means you found something to get uh you get to learn which is the greatest part of the journey being a musician i like that that's cool shane cool stuff so peely good morning from the rocket city great conversation keep going thank you sir remain teachable absolutely tiffany says there is freedom in not being the go-to person in some seasons i think there he is there he is uh i agree uh, being able to not be the person because that can if you are the go-to person all the time that can really become taxing on you as an individual you can get burnt out you know you could be doing everything and you are the go-to person so now you're burnt out because all right man y'all can call somebody else i'm good <laughs> i get it so when people call you they have a vision something they created for you to be a part of maybe it's a time for an individual individual creations to come yeah absolutely i like that so when people call you, they have a vision. And going back to the point of you not being the go-to person, they have a vision, like, like Tiffany said, they have a vision of what they saw this thing becoming or the group of people, like for me as a producer, I do this a lot. There's some people, um, you know, there, there are some people that I call for certain sessions because as I'm creating this song, in my mind, I'm like, oh, this person would be a great fit for this song. No disrespect to any other musician I know. There are a lot of musicians. I know a lot of musicians, that all of them that play all different stuff, but I don't call everybody for everything. There's a vision that I have. And so with that being said, if people are not calling you, it's not always personal. You don't have to get mad and upset about it because you're not their go-to person. You don't have to get mad and upset. It's not personal all the time. Sometimes it could be personal, but majority of the time, for me speaking from the standpoint of a producer, if I'm calling this guy over here, it's not because I don't like that guy over there who I just used for something else. Like, oh, you used me for this, but you call this guy for that. Maybe you didn't like my performance. No, I love your performance, but I want to use this guy for this, the next thing. So it's not always personal. So you have to be careful about how you evaluate uh, certain situations. Um, <laughs> Marcelo says, oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, uh, Steven says, I love the book. It motivated me to start my own YouTube channel. Sweet, man. Sweet. Glad to hear that, Steven. Love stuff like that. Uh, your groove is very nice, bro. I appreciate that. Uh, can you play in the Jesus, in Jesus' name? Uh, I don't know what song you're referring to. Uh, you said in the Jesus' name. I'm assuming that you meant another song because I, I don't, I don't know that one uh amazing man david man good morning david david's an amazing player appreciate you being here this morning uh call me for any latin jazz track you need bro <laughs> i got you i got you uh rafael i'm out glad i was able to catch some of the show thank you for being a part of this rafael uh really appreciate it so i've gotten through all of the comments so that's pretty much my idea that i want to share with you guys for today is the side where you're going once you decide where you're going you automatically know where you're not going that's the thought once you decide 
you automatically know what you're not want to do, what you're not going to do, and what you're not wanting to do. All these different things. Once you center it and get it to a point, it's like, all right, I kind of funneled all these things down. I've been praying, uh, playing, practicing. Yeah, you can pray too. Uh, praying, playing, practicing, doing all these things. Now I kind of narrowed it down, and I know exactly what I want to do. And so I don't want to do all these other things. And that's pretty much what happened in my career. I, I narrowed down what I wanted to do, and that got rid of all other things that I didn't want to do. Uh, Steven says, yes, the Escalade is amazing, especially the older models. I love mine. <laughs> I definitely love mine still to this day. Uh, I think that's one of my better ideas in terms of purchases for cars. Uh, you know, I know cars depreciate. That's so I don't have to get the sermon on cars depreciate. That's my personal thing. My wife knows it. I don't splurge. I don't buy a lot of stuff. Uh, and I'm not a fancy guy. I'm not uh, a very exotic guy. But I do like cars. That's my thing. If you got to get me on something, I do like cars. I like uh Fix it up cars and that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's that's my thing. Uh, in the Jesus name. Uh, I'm not sure if I know that one, uh, Marcelo. Uh, Kirk Franklin. Uh, oh, are you talking about something about the name Jesus? Are you talking about that song? All right. So, Yo Vid says, thanks for sharing some wisdom, man. Love from the Philippines. Thank you for being here. Thank you, man. I have learned a lot from your vids. Thank you for the inspiration. Wow, man. Thank you, David. Had no idea that you were even watching, man. I really, really appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. And uh, for everybody that joined this morning, thank you for watching. Thank if you found this video helpful, uh, be sure to share it with somebody. We're still growing this channel. We're still on our way to 40,000 uh, subscribers on this YouTube channel. It's a slow process, but it's cool. I'm, I'm learning more and more. Um, I'm okay with not having a massive amount of followers. Now, do I welcome it? By all means, anybody would. But at the same time, that's it was my objective. I'm not going to uh, sugarcoat it. At one point, you know, that was my objective. I was trying to really, really grow my channel and, and trying to get more views and trying to get more people interested. For a long time, that was my motivation. You know, I was doing certain things and, you know, as anybody that gets on social media, you're trying to get more views, get more people engaged. That's, I think that's just human nature. It'll make you a bad person. But as I've grown, as I've learned to mature a little bit more, I'm more interested in quality over quantity, if that makes any sense. So the quality of people that are showing up to take in uh, these things that I'm sharing with uh, Grooves and Motivation and the content that I show on my channel, I'd rather get people that I know who are being impacted by the things that I share than a whole bunch of people who could care less about anything that I say, if that makes any sense. So uh, quality over quantity. The numbers are always good. They help you to do certain things. And as a musician, I can definitely leverage those numbers uh, for my own benefit and for my own career. But quality over quantity, one of the things I hope to do is be responsible with my followers because one of the questions I have uh, for you guys who are after followers, where are you leading your followers? Where are you leading these people who are following you, who are listening to your voice? Uh, oh, you said love theory. Oh, okay, got you, got you. Um, yeah, I probably won't get to play that today. <laughs> I got you. Um, but what, where are you leading these people who are listening to you, who are watching your post? Be mindful. One of my things, one of my biggest things, and I'll let you in on a secret of mine, in what I do, one of my highest things is accountability. And I share this in my consulting. When I'm consulting with music groups or with bands or with church uh, bands and that kind of thing, integrity and accountability are the two things that I'm huge on. Like, where are we leading these people who are following us? If I were to spend 24 hours with you, would I be pleased with who I got to know? Not saying that you have to be a perfect person, but are you what you say you are? Are you what you represent? You know what I'm saying? If I spend 24 hours with you, I'm not going to be disappointed in what I learn about you as a person, as a person in terms of your integrity and in terms of your accountability. So those are two of my biggest things that I'm trying to make sure that we have on this channel is integrity and accountability. 
those two things are very, very important to me. Listen, I never really say this, um, but I want to make it known. Uh, who is that? Is it just me or is the audio double where the sound sounds like a flanger effect? It, it could possibly be like that. I don't know. We're at the end of the broadcast, so hopefully it's not too, too distracting. Uh, there is a delay when we're doing these lives. Uh, just simply because you're probably hearing the room volume and you're hearing the volume of the mic. So, yeah, that, there's probably a slight delay uh, that's happening with the broadcast. I don't know. Uh, but, yeah, integrity and accountability. Um, the other thing about uh, – let me go back here. The other thing about the, the, that piece uh, that I was going to say, uh, that's what I do in terms of – music consulting, going back to the deciding what it is you wanted to do. When I walked away from my mega church position as bass player, music director, I knew that there was something that I wanted to do. And I knew it wasn't only being a bass player every single week. I love that. I love playing and I love playing this instrument. I love playing in the band setting, but doing my assessment, I realized about myself that's more to me than just sitting behind somebody playing a bass every week in terms of every Sunday and every Wednesday. There's more to me than that. So there's information that I've been blessed to have over the years. I've worked in a lot of environments. I've had the pleasure of working with many artists. I had the pleasure of being behind the scenes on a lot of things and being in a lot of situations that I know most musicians probably won't get the opportunity to have that, you know, a uh, chance to either be a music director or be a fly on the wall in certain rooms and that kind of thing. So with all this information that I've gathered over the years, I said I wanted to start sharing this stuff and start equipping musicians and start equipping bands and helping them to be aware of certain things that they're doing in order to grow, in order to move forward, in order to help others. You know what I'm saying? So I went into music consulting. That pretty much what I do. Uh, I consult as well as the coaching and giving the lessons and all that kind of stuff. Consulting is a big part of who I am because I want to help uh, groups. I want to help bands. I want to help uh, them to kind of hear on a musical tip to kind of improve some things and be more musically aware of some things uh, in terms of uh, playing and that kind of thing. But on the more personal tip, going back to the whole raising the level of accountability and integrity, I want to be able to help People do that in their whole groups, in their whole band, or in their like their their worship uh, group or their worship band, their teams, uh, whatever the band is or whatever. I want to be able to raise that level of integrity and change the um, the narrative about musicians. You know what I'm saying? I know all of us are not guilty of this, but a lot of us over the years have developed bad narratives as musicians. Musicians are only known for certain things. And I want to help to change that narrative as it relates to musicians. When people look at us, they don't only see a talent and a gift, but they see someone who's integral. They see that accountability. This is somebody I can really count on. And there are people around that scattered around the world, and you might be that person in your group or in your church or in your whatever, in your band, that everybody knows you're that person. But how much greater would it be if your whole band had that level of integrity and accountability. Just something to think about. So if you're interested, be sure to send me an email. Um, you can you can email me Jermaine at JermaineMorgan.net if you just want to send a general email. But if you have any booking inquiries, uh, be sure to send me booking at JermaineMorgan.net. Booking at JermaineMorgan.net if you want me to come in and talk to your team, your band, anything like that. Now that this COVID thing is kind of clearing up a little bit, I am accepting uh, dates. I um, have a obligation to this, actually a church that I'm working with. I think I talked about this last week that, I, um, you know, I coach and I or oh, consult rather. And I meet with the band virtually every week. So that's possible too. We do virtual sessions, Zoom calls and that kind of thing. And uh, I sit in on their service like once a month. Uh, so there are options available if you guys want me to come in and kind of uh, work with your team, your band. I just want to put that out there because people don't know what you don't tell them. All right. So let me read a few of these comments and I'm out. Um, let's go. So glad I got to catch this. I-O-U-T. 
I, I got you. Thank you for being here. Uh, so true. Where are we leading our followers? Eugene says, is it? Okay, you was talking about the sound earlier. All right, I think I got through all of them. Good bass guitar. Is it a Federa? No, this is not a Federa. This is actually my signature Warrior bass by Warrior Guitars. I've been rocking this bass for about 10 years. Yeah, this is my signature Warrior Isabella. I named it recently. I've been had this bass 10 years and never gave it a name. I'm calling it Izzy. I'm calling it Izzy. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, pointless information, I know. But yeah, we calling her Izzy. So, short for Isabella, right? It put a lot of thought into that. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to start naming my bases now, I think, most of them. Yeah, so anyway, thank you guys for being here. And uh, again, if you want to contact me uh, about possibly coming and doing some consulting uh, with your group, your band, that kind of thing, send me an email, um, booking at JermaineMorgan.net, or you can simply send me an email, Jermaine at JermaineMorgan.net. Uh, he said, no, I am actually saving for your, oh, wow. That's what's up, Steven. That's, that's good stuff, man. Good stuff. Let me know. Let me know how that works out. Let me know how that works out. I can't wait to hear it. Can't wait to see it, man. So good stuff. Yeah, you can have this, this, you can have this base built, uh, by simply going to Warrior, uh, Warrior Guitars. It's, uh, served me well over the last 10 years and I've, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, but anyway. Thank you, guys. If you want to know more about uh, my stuff and coaching personal, if you're not necessarily interested in having me to come to speak to your team with the consulting, if you want one-on-one -on -one coaching, you can find it at JermaineMorgan.net. You'll see a tab that it says coaching, and you can simply click that tab, and uh, let's, let's get to work. Uh, last but not least, I fail to mention this all the time, but uh, I, I want to mention it because several of my clients have come from watching these broadcast but i also produce i write create music if you got some music in your head that you know you should have been recording this music years ago you still holding on to it you haven't put it out let me produce this music for you i've created something on my website and i should have put my commercial i'll put a commercial up next week so you guys can see it but i got something on my website called the music production plan some of you guys are already going through it uh and basically what it is it allows you to make monthly payments on getting your song produced so you don't have to drop a lump sum of money at one time you can spend uh make monthly payments it's, i think i think i'm the first one to do it that i know about uh that allow you i'm a producer and we're getting quality musicians uh, to get your idea put together and get that whether it's an instrumental if it's a bass instrumental come on now y'all know i got you uh guitar instrumental saxophone whatever it is you do uh you vocalist and you want to get that music out there, be sure to visit my website, JermaineMorgan.net. Check out music production. Click that tab. You'll see my music production plans. And there we can get started on building your song and helping it come alive. All right, that's all of my advertising for today. Listen, I have to do this now. I ain't nobody, you know, they ain't on here put my stuff out like that. I got to tell y'all because if I don't tell you, you won't know. So, so again, thank y'all. Um, so awesome to hear this narrative change, which is so great. Playing and ministering from a higher level of integrity and character uh, did, is so refreshing. Got you, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, thanks again. This is Christopher Hall. Thanks again. Appreciate you. Thank you all. And for the last time, I'm out of here. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, enjoyed sharing with you guys. Hopefully you got a lot out of this. If you did, share it with somebody. Uh, let somebody know in the comments, and I'll see you on the next live. I'm out. Peace.